But I knew he'd never seen the movie because it hadn't come out yet. We make our own purpose in life, and we're here for this brief instant in cosmic time. And it, well, the problem is it's the biggest threat to science because saying that you can't ask the question or can't even discuss certain things is the end of science. Yeah, I think it's that's that's what I mean because – Obviously, as you pointed out, there are plenty of scientists who are still in the space who are not treating science like a religion, like an, ide like an yeah. ideology. But it is creeping in even from the outside forces so much yeah. that we're getting to a point where that is the ultimate – hack against religion throughout human history in that they're like, well, this is how it is because this is what it says and you can't ask any questions about it. Yeah, no, yeah, I, it's just, it's, I gotta hit this and see what it is. Oh, the what the fuck button? Hold on, I gotta, I gotta get No, the reason, the, uh, the reason that I... Now you can edit. What the heck? Yeah, okay, I should have had that. No, I had a thing like that from that game where you hit it and makes noise. Yeah. Once I debated this Christian apologist named William Lane Craig and I knew... He'd, he'd say so many lies and nonsense that I couldn't contradict him effectively. So I, I was on Australia. So I had that button. I told the audience, every time he says something that's a lie, I'm going to hit it. <laughs> <laughs> now, how do, you, how, do you, how do you determine it to be a lie versus... Because it's, it, a lie is something that disagrees with empirical evidence. Mm. That's so what out. kinds of things would he say? Oh, well, you know, I forget at the time. But I mean, well, first But we thing, can still see this on, this on Probably, YouTube, right? yes, somewhere. Yeah. I think yeah. you, probably that debate was real. The, it was three debates I did in Australia. Well, one thing I knew is I, there was a movie about me and Richard Dawkins called The Unbelievers. Mm. which he did a podcast about what the equivalent of a podcast was at that time uh, about, but I knew he'd never seen the movie because it hadn't come out yet. So he talked about what we did, said and did, and, it, and, then I, 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 and then I play a clip from the movie and it was just totally different. So that's mm. called a lie. Mm. <laughs> that's gotcha. a simple lie. He'd lie about, you know, the, about what, phys what he would say. He'd use these highfalutin th things about cosmology to argue that cosmologists... It, it implied that God had to exist, and and it does, and it, it and so oh, I would yeah, argue that, his, that he was uh, he was abusing physics and distorting it to to get the claims that he want to get the answer he wanted, but which when, is what people on, do. Hold on one sec. So he's talking about the Christian God in that way. Yeah, but yeah. Let, let me actually even pull it back from that and pretend he was just talking about like a God in general. Yeah, if this God of Spinoza or something. Yeah. If if you're look, whatever it is, mm -hmm. some form creator A, whatever mm -hmm. it is. When you're looking at things that are built in perfect, like almost symmetry and harmony throughout, moving through our planetary system, into the galaxies, into the universe, could, could you see why you might think that something more perfect than us would have had to I can see why people, happen? of course, I can see why yeah. people believe in God, have believed in God as long as people have been people, okay? Mm. Because it's a nice explanation of something you don't understand. Yes. But what we've learned is the real universe is far more fascinating than the than the than the little fairy tales of the Bible or what you pick your favorite religion. Uh, it's I mean it, so of course I can understand why people not only think there might be a higher being but want there to be because my goodness yes. it's a, being in a universe without any purpose is terrifying and with no one looking after you terrifying. But it's also but it's also exciting. That way. Well, but you know, it depends on your attitude. It's terrifying. And some people may say, well, if there's no purpose, why should I go on living tomorrow? And the yeah. answer is you make your own purpose. Okay? You, we make our own purpose in life, and we're here for this brief instant in cosmic time. And my goodness, how amazing is it to be able to look out at the universe and see 100 billion galaxies, to, to learn about mm. how, how life works, to experience love and all the rest. And so all of that is significant to us, but it has no cosmic significance. So, you, you know, it's but worth that's it. interesting. Yeah. You, you see, you have the perspective of how, I don't think you used the word there, but I'm going to put the word there, correct she, me if I'm wrong. Huh. You have the, the perspective of how lucky we are to have this opportunity, like you yeah. yourself living yeah. here at great, this time. It's a great, amazing coincidence, and, and I enjoy it. you have that without an idea of like a creator at the beginning. That's pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah, well, I think that's, thank you, but I think it's the right attitude to, to have, and it, it doesn't make, it makes life more, look, I think it makes life more exciting to know that we have this unique accident to be here for 100 years, let's say, if we're lucky. It makes every moment more precious than knowing it was somehow predestined to happen. It makes the opportunity, if you can experience the realities of the world, enjoy them, experience music and travel and, and all the things that we are fortunate enough to accidentally have. And it makes, to me, it makes it more precious rather than, there's no, there's a linguistic argument about loss of faith. And I think it's a problem. Some people, if they lose their faith, feel like there's a gap. 
But mm. it doesn't have to. The world can be, there's no loss. It can be richer, not poorer. Mm. How do you look at emotion, though? Whether it be... I look at emotion. Hope, I have hope, emotions. I'm human. Happiness, sadness, love, yeah. hate. What about it? How do you... I, how, why do we form that? What well, makes us probably, able to form well, that? Well, look, I, there's a... By the way, whenever we say why, we mean how. Because why presumes purpose. Okay? And, and so what we really mean is how. And the answer is pro- evolution. Evolutionary psychology gives go- good arguments for why. Why it even gives good arguments for why you might believe in God. And in fact, you know, I, I've, so? done, I've done lots of podcasts. So I've, you know, I just did a podcast with my friend uh, Robert Sapolsky about determinism. And, and you can understand exactly the mechanism. I was going to say why, but how uh, bio- neurobiological systems release certain hormones in order to, in order for survival, you know, and it evolves into a, an emotion. But why don't other... Now we we, we well, do why know don't? Because species we have a, feel we, things, but why do certain species maybe not? Feel? How do you know they don't? That's a good question. Okay, and that's an important question. One of the reasons I'm a vegetarian. 